In this video, I'm gonna help you decide if Mainstage or Ableton is the perfect fit for your live keyboard setup. And there are a couple of key things that we need to look at for you to make an educated decision. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. Brett Pontecorvo here at LiveKeyboardist.com where I help keyboard players just like you with the ins and outs of Ableton, with sound design, and with building a fantastic live keyboard setup. If you're new here, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. So the first big difference between Mainstage and Ableton is the price point. So Mainstage is coming in at just $30 where Ableton actually has three levels that you can purchase the lowest being 99 and then jumping all the way up to 449 for standard and for the sweet version 749. So pretty big jump in price. However, Ableton is a fully functioning DAW, which means if you're looking to potentially be able to also produce tracks in addition to play live, that is going to be a better fit. Now, Mainstage does not work uh, on Windows computers, so that is also something else to consider. Uh, additionally, Mainstage tends to be a lot more visual. Um, when we open it up, you can really see exactly what notes um, are going where, and you can have these sort of mappable parameters on the screen, uh, whereas with Ableton, everything is a little bit more hidden, so I rely much more heavily on my hardware controller, uh, the Novation Launch Control XL, uh, to kind of know what's happening. And if you're interested in learning more about that, I'll put a card above and also a link to where you can get that in the description below. So let's start with some of the features of Mainstage. So like I mentioned before, Mainstage makes it really easy to see what you're doing. So I've got two patches pulled up here. Um, and it's really easy for me to see exactly sort of what um, is happening. And then you can also design this main space here. Um, so I could pretty easily map these uh, to a fader um, if I so wanted to. Um, and then when I went into this mode here, um, I could map this uh, however I wanted to. If I wanted to perhaps control the volume uh, of my horn patch. Uh, I'd be able to pretty easily do that. Now the other thing that's nice about this is that when I click into a different patch, uh, this becomes uh, unassigned and completely mappable, which means you can have one fader controlling multiple different parameters on a per patch basis, which Ableton does not allow you to do. Now, some people might look at this as a strength, but in my personal opinion, it's better to sort of have one knob do one thing just for the muscle memory perspective. Now, it's also good to not overlook the fact that Mainstage comes with a ton of presets. Um, this is just sort of the quick start uh, concert uh, and... That's a pretty decent uh, piano. But truly, I mean, as we just go through these folders, um, their e-pianos tend to be pretty nice. Um, so lots of places to start here. Now, inside Ableton, you don't get quite as many presets. However, um, they are very tweakable and there are good ones. I just find that Ableton's are not as geared directly towards keyboard players. So they do take a little bit more work um, in setting up. Now, there are some cons of main stage, some things that we have to think about when uh, we're working in the software. Now, generally, this is significantly more CPU hungry. So if you are running a computer that needs a little bit of careful thought uh, when you're doing resource intensive tasks, Mainstage might not be the best piece of software for you. Mainstage also has limited playback features. Now you certainly could go in here and create an auxiliary channel strip uh, for loopback or if you want uh, to run uh, tracks, you can come in here and add a uh, stereo playback. However, my experience with this has been that it is not the most stable and it's a little bit um, clunky. So 
that's sort of one uh, of the downsides to using this. It is a great piece of software overall, but remember it's also a $30 piece of software. So sometimes things don't quite work the way they should, but uh, major wins for the built-in instruments, major wins for the visual display, not so much um, for the playback, and definitely not so much for uh, how it handles your computer's resources, as well as for playback and live looping. So let's have a look at Ableton. Now, Ableton is what I personally use because I just think it happens to be the most uh, stable option that we have. I also do often run tracks, and so it can be a little bit easier for me. Now, I don't have the same visual layout here that I would have um, inside of main stage, and many of these sounds I've created myself, so there is a little bit more work to be done on that end, but... Um, you can see that it is still a fully functioning setup where I have control over each and every parameter uh, that I'm working with. Um, and I've got some sounds in here that have... Um, have come out pretty nice. It really works well for me. Um, you can also see I've got uh, the shells of some tracks here um, that are very easy to sort of break out and label. Um, however, a lot of these built-in sounds that it comes with are not always directed um, specifically at keyboard players, so they can be uh, just a little bit clunky to use. Now, like I mentioned before, this is fully capable of recording, so there is a view on the other side here. Uh, where you could easily record what you're playing and you also have options to mix and sort of create a track. I probably wouldn't do that with this particular set because this is really built for um, live playing, but it's obviously extremely doable and people do use it for that. So if you're considering wanting to be able to build a track, then I would say yes, this is uh, the way to go. Um, it's also extremely uh, friendly with your resources. If you look here, I do have quite a few patches as well as uh, some global channel strips here um, and a good amount of sends and returns uh, to sort of route my audio. And this uh, generally during performance is at about 40% CPU and I really never do have a problem with the stability. In addition to that, Ableton is really built out uh, to make live looping very easily. Um, you can very quickly create a clip um, of whatever you're doing. And if I hit play, um, this will just start looping. So, you know, it's sort of just built into there. So whereas with main stage, you have to work a little bit harder. Ableton is just totally designed to do that. Now, there are a couple of cons, some negative points to using Ableton. First of all is the price point. It is extremely expensive, but definitely worth it. It can also get a little bit clunky if you're trying to do a lot of chord triggering. I once played a musical where I was having to switch between chord triggers every single bar in Ableton, and that was definitely a time where I was like, okay, main stage handles this a little bit better, just because uh, main stage sort of allows you to change that type of a setting with a little bit more ease, where in Ableton, you have to kind of work around a little bit harder to get that to be possible. Um, the other thing that is a little bit difficult about main stage, uh, about Ableton rather, is that Ableton lets you only have one control per knob, right? So uh, here's an example of that. This is my piano channel strip, and basically any piano sound that I have is going to run through here, okay? So this filter is mapped to one knob on my launch control and that's all this will ever do. So no matter what combination of patches I am playing, that will always be the filter for piano. So if you like to have one knob do different things depending on the patch, main stage is gonna do that better than Ableton will. However, this setup does really make your controller become part of your instrument. So there are some things about this type of a setup that actually can work to your advantage if you're willing to put in the time to learn how to play it sort of as an extension of your instrument. So who is main stage for, okay? Main stage is for song specific players. If you are doing a cover band gig and you're playing something exactly the same way every single time that requires very specific programming, Main stage is probably a good way to go for you. However, 
I would say main stage is also for people who are playing lower pressure gigs. The reason that I switched from main stage to Ableton is because main stage just was not stable enough to handle uh, sort of the higher uh, intensity programming that I wanted to do. Uh, main stage is also for people who do not need uh, to produce tracks to make recordings uh, or for people who can go a little bit lighter on the looping and the live playback. So who is Ableton for? Ableton is for the people who need live looping, who are concerned about having a really stable setup. Uh, if you're playing in high pressure situations where you really can't have anything crash, then Ableton is definitely worth the money for you. Um, and Ableton is also for people who want to do a ton of looping, uh, people who want to do a ton of playback. If you're running tracks, uh, Ableton is definitely for you. Now, if you're looking to switch from main stage to Ableton, then I want you to check out the link below because I've got a course that will help you do that. Um, and if you're wanting to learn to build a setup inside Ableton Live, I've got some common patch lists on the screen right now. Um, and for those of you who are new here, do please consider giving a like and subscribe if this video gave you value, and I will see you next time on LiveKeyboardist.com.